Imagine a universe where you're as rich as Bill Gates, you're married to Kate Upton, and you're as admired as Oprah Winfrey. What if I told you that there may be a parallel universe where all these things are true about you? Many people dismiss the idea of parallel universes because they think that since by definition we can't see them, they must be like the Bigfoot monster. They may exist in theory, but they probably don't. But parallel universes are not a theory. They're predictions from theories that are widely embraced by physicists. What is the evidence for alternative universes and could different versions of us exist in parallel somewhere out there? That's coming up right now. Alternate universes are predicted by a couple of theories. For example, string theory has 10 dimensions and by some estimates, up to 10 to the 500 solutions. If this theory is true, then all those 10 to the 500 solutions would potentially have a universe attached to them. We just happen to be living in this one universe. But in this case, all of the alternate universes would have completely different properties than our universe. And in most of them, life would probably not exist. So these would not be parallel universes where different versions of us could exist. But there are two other theories that predict not alternate universes, but parallel universes, where the universes are just like ours, but only slightly different, where different versions of us could exist. One is the idea of infinite universes. Science doesn't know how big space actually is. The reason it appears to be only 13.7 billion light years in radius is because that limit is set by the distance that light has had the ability to travel since the instant of the Big Bang. But this does not mean that there isn't more universe out there beyond the portion that's visible to us. The universe is likely larger and perhaps infinitely large. If space is infinite, then it must start repeating at some point because there's only a finite number of ways that any set of particles can be arranged. Physicist Brian Greene calculated this number to be 10 to the 10 to the 122. Now this is a very, very large number but it's still minuscule compared to infinity. So if you travel far enough in space, you should see another version of you living in completely different circumstances, perhaps as president of the United States or as rich as Bill Gates. But the most intriguing theory that leads to parallel universes is one that is embraced by some of the biggest names in physics, including Max Tegmark, Brian Greene, Alan Guth, and Sean Carroll. And this idea of parallel universes comes from the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. According to the laws of quantum mechanics, all particles are in superposition, meaning they exist as waves of probabilities in multiple states and multiple locations at once. They only gain distinct properties and location when they are measured. The many worlds interpretation was proposed by Hugh Everett for his PhD thesis in 1957 at Princeton University. This theory says that the probability wave never collapses, that every time a wave seemingly collapses in our universe, there is a parallel universe where no such collapse happens. This interpretation implies that reality splits like a fork in the road. In effect, this implies that the entire universe is one gigantic wave function that contains all possible realities. Everett even called this the universal wave function in his thesis. So the universe is also in superposition of all possible states of its constituent particles. And as it evolves, some of these superpositions break down, making certain realities or worlds distinct and isolated from each other. To be clear, the many worlds interpretation doesn't exactly predict other universes in the way that scientific theories make predictions. This is just deduced from the hypothesis that a wave function collapse does not occur in other realities. The many worlds interpretation avoids the complication of wave function collapse, but it creates the seeming complication of a near infinite number of parallel worlds. This seems to be a fantastical idea that there's a universe out there for every outcome that you can possibly conceive. Just like in quantum mechanics, everything with a non-zero probability of occurring is a reality somewhere in some universe. In other words, there's a universe out there where everything happened just like it did in this one, except you made one or two decisions differently and your life turned out completely differently. 
like you became as rich as Bill Gates or married Kate Upton. Bryce DeWitt, who popularized the many worlds interpretation in the 1970s, says, every quantum transition taking place on every star, in every galaxy, in every remote corner of the universe, is splitting our local world on Earth into a myriad of copies. Very bold claims like this require some bold evidence. So we have to ask some questions like, okay, how does a split actually happen? Well, this is the crazy thing about the interpretation. It says that the splitting occurs whenever a wave collapses, meaning whenever a measurement or observation occurs. So this would mean that when you walk around in your own house, there must be millions of splitting events because molecules on your feet are interacting with the molecules on the floor. The number of splits in parallel universes has to be astronomical. Some physicists consider this almost self-evidently absurd, but others, like Oxford physicist David Deutsch says, many worlds is virtually a fact. It is no more an interpretation than dinosaurs are an interpretation of the fossil record. And even though the results sound fantastic, the many worlds interpretation predicts outcomes that are completely consistent with physics experiments over the course of decades. So it has to be taken seriously, even though it sounds ridiculous. And I have to say that for me too, the idea of billions or trillions of worlds is not aesthetically pleasing. But I can't reject the theory just because it doesn't satisfy my intuitions. I have no vote on how the universe should work. But one of the most serious difficulties with multiple worlds is what it does to the notion of self. MIT physicist Max Tegmark says, the act of making a decision causes a person to split into multiple copies. But what does it mean to say that splittings generate copies of me? In what sense are those copies me? I have no awareness of the other copies. Columbia University professor Brian Green says, we just need to broaden our minds of what self actually means. Each copy believes that it is you. The real you is the sum total of all the splittings, he says. But physicist and philosopher David Wallace says, that the notion of the I can only make sense if one's consciousness is confined to a single branch of the quantum multiverse reality. But there's no physics that could explain that. If your consciousness or awareness of you were somehow able to snake along just one path of the quantum multiverse, as Wallace says, then we'd have to regard it as some non-physical entity immune to the laws of physics. So how could we ever know if the many worlds theory is correct? In the late 1990s, a thought experiment was proposed by MIT physicist Max Tegmark called quantum suicide. This is similar to the Schrodinger cat experiment and an analogous experiment would go something like this. Let's say you're participating in a wager. You were put in a box with a gun pointed to your head and a button in your hand. The button controls a quantum splitter that detects the spin of an electron. If after you press the button, the spin says up, the gun does not fire. You come out of the box and win the prize of a billion dollars. But if the spin shows down, then the gun fires and you die instantly. There's a 50% chance that the splitter would detect up and 50% that it would detect down. The question is, would you take this bet? Few people would, I think, would accept the 50-50 odds of life and death. But I might take this bet, and here's why. If you truly believe in the concept of multiple worlds, then you would take this bet every time because the only one of you that would ever come out of that box would be the one that remains conscious. In other words, in your world, for you to be conscious, you would always have to be in the reality that survived. In another world, the other yous would be dead but you would not know this. Your conscious self would always survive and become a billionaire. The bottom line is this. In the many worlds interpretation, all outcomes with a non-zero probability have a 100% chance of occurring in a parallel universe. Your consciousness always survives in some world. So therefore, you will always survive the box wager because the survival of your awareness depends on your not being dead. But obviously, we cannot test the multiple worlds theory in this way, so how do we test for these parallel universes? Max Tegmark says, we can test this by studying quantum mechanics and building quantum computers. If a quantum computer fails and we learn that fundamentally the equations of quantum mechanics are wrong, then these parallel universes don't exist. But if we can build quantum computers and quantum mechanics equations are proven true, 
that we have to take it seriously, no matter how aesthetically unpleasing it seems. Arvinash here. If you like our videos, then consider subscribing and ring the bell so that you can be informed when we upload more fascinating videos. We make one to two videos a week. We'll see you in the next video.